Welcome back, guys, to the hardcore run of Final Fantasy 1 for the NES. I did a little bit of leveling up. I got the team to level 30 now. Here's Ninja Hope stats. Red Wizard Hat stats. And finally, Black Wizard Onyx's stats. Here's everybody's armor. All of our weapons. Magic is still the exact same, and here's our items. Alright, we just learned how to speak uh, Le Finish, or Le Finish, however you want to pronounce that. So our next destination is uh, the town of Le Fien. Le Fien, however you want to pronounce it. Alright, that was it that we just passed back there. We gotta land the airship up here and hike the rest of the way there. It's a pretty long walk, but uh, we should be able to handle it no problem. I'd say the strongest enemy that we'd run into around here is probably T-Rexes or Zombles. I'd say Zombles are a little more difficult than T-Rexes because Zombles can appear in parties up to four. Whereas T-Rexes just appear in uh, parties of one usually. Or actually I think it's Tyrannos. T-Rex I think is the rare enemy that appears in the desert. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Giants aren't too threatening considering that we could take them out in the Earth Cave earlier in the game. We don't have too much further, and we'll be at the next town that we're going to. There it is, right there. This is an interesting town, I think. Has a hidden magic shop where you can learn a couple level 8 spells. Life 2 for your white wizard, or nuke for your black wizard. And of course, we already got nukes, so we won't really be uh, go going to those magic stores or anything. Sadly, the red wizard can't learn any level 8 spells. Still, he's got some pretty good magic, considering that he can learn up through level 7 at least. After we take out this enemy party, we'll be uh, entering our next town. In uh, Lafian, we'll be getting a chime, which will allow us to enter the Mirage Tower. Seems kind of odd that you'd need something to enter that tower, but hey, whatever. Alright. Here we are. One thing that I find kind of odd about this town is the overly long bridges. It'll, it'll take you over the little rivers that they got in town, but it'll also extend onto the land. I wonder how come they did that. Doesn't really matter, though. Talk to this Sky Warrior here to get the chime. One thing that I find kind of interesting is one of the Sky Warriors here in this town will uh, mention that their five most powerful warriors set out to find the cause of the Earth's rot, and that uh, they know that the five warriors live, but as bats. And uh, that'll come into play later on. We'll get to that whenever we get to that. For now, though, we're just headed back to the airship. And we got some frost wolves here. No sense in wasting time on them. Of course, our next destination is the Mirage Tower. There will be a couple of treasures that I'll look forward to getting in the Mirage Tower. Stuff like, uh, we'll be getting another ribbon there. Uh, the katana for the ninja, which, uh... I don't know, the, the katana is the third most powerful weapon in the game, but it is, uh, visually unimpressive. Looks like a dagger. They could have made it look like a sword, but they made it look like a dagger. Whatever, though. Alright, just about back to the airship. I never really found these particular creatures to be worth fighting. From what I can remember, they hit you pretty hard, and they don't give anywhere near enough experience and definitely not enough gold to fight them. Just my opinion on them anyway, I never fight them, I always just ignore them. We're just about to the Mirage Tower, it's right there. And of course we had to get into a random encounter one step before the tower. Can't say I'm surprised. Alright, there we go. Glad we ran away uh, first turn. Alright, so what we gotta do right now is we have to climb up the Mirage Tower, which uh, is three floors tall. Once we get to the third floor, there will be a teleporter that we have to enter. Upon entering the teleporter, we'll be warped to the Sky Castle. Then from there, we have to search for the Fiend of Wind. The Sky Castle has one of the most uh, powerful enemies in the entire game, War Mech. Which I really hope that we don't find War Mech, because if we do, well... I can almost guarantee that my entire team will die and the Hardcore Challenge will be over. So let's hope that we don't encounter War Mech. Chances of encountering him are pretty low, though, so I'm not too worried about it, but if we do encounter him, we're screwed. Alright, this here is probably the longest floor here in the Mirage Tower, because you have to do a big circle around it to get to the staircase. I like all the ancient technology that you see in the Mirage Tower and the Sky Castle. All the robots and everything that you see everywhere. 
Seems pretty advanced for what I would assume is supposed to be like medieval times, considering that we're using magic and swords and axes and stuff. The Sky Castle is a lot more advanced than the Mirage Tower will ever be. We're just about to the third floor. There we go. This floor is really small. We have a little mini-boss battle of sorts on this floor. We have to fight the Blue Dragon. Blue Dragon doesn't put up too much of a fight if you're uh, pretty good leveled. Fire spells do uh, quite a bit of damage to him as well, so you can use those to hit him pretty hard. And of course, if you have nuke and stuff like that, then feel free to toss spells like that at him. He shouldn't put up too much of a fight. This should actually be the final hit on him right here. There we go. Yeah, I didn't think he'd last too long. Kind of like the blue dragon, I don't know why. I always expected the blue dragon to use, like, ice spells and stuff, you know, being blue. You associate the color blue with cold and stuff. Instead, though, he usually uses stuff like uh, lightning or thunder or whatever it's called. I think it's called thunder. Whatever the case, though, we're now at the Sky Castle. You got some spellcasting weapons here if you'd like to get those, like uh, the Bane Sword, stuff like that. The uh, white shirt and black shirt if you want to get those. The only stuff I'm really going to worry about getting here in the Sky Castle is uh, we're going to get another ribbon, we're going to get the katana for the ninja, and we're going to get a pro cape, which I think I'll give the pro cape to the black wizard because uh, the red wizard has uh, pretty good defense as it is. These enemies are pretty pathetic. They always just try to hit you with Stinger, which only poisons you. Pretty easy enemies. We get a ribbon in this room right here. There it is. Let's go ahead and put that on really quick. Even though we'll have less physical defense for the ninja, I still think that the upped magic defense will be more than worth it. Alright, the next teleporter to take us to the next floor is directly south of where we're at now. If you have a knight in your party, you can get adamant, adamantite uh, here in this uh, place, just to the lower left of where I am right here. Take that back to the dwarf cave and he'll make Excalibur, which is the second most powerful sword in the entire game, and only a knight can equip it. Alright, guards and sentries. I never fight these guys either. Come to think of it, I usually don't fight hardly any of the enemies in the desert and sky castle. I fight some of them in the Mirage Tower sometimes, but I mostly just ignore the enemies in the Sky Castle and the desert. Don't know why, that's just how I've always done it, I suppose. Alright, we're going over this way because uh, we can get a pro cape over here, which is basically a shield for mages. Got a cloth, we don't want that. Gold, that's not bad, I guess. Soft potion, which is worthless. Of course, the pro cape is in the very last possible choice. Oh well. I always forget which one it's in. There we go. I figured since the red mage already has a buckler, we'd go ahead and uh, give the pro cape to the black wizard. That way everybody has a shield. Alright, just keep on moving. We only have two more floors left to climb here in the sky castle kind of like this floor. I like how you got this little window here that you can look out and see where all the fiend spirits or whatever are going to. Which is the Temple of Fiends. If you pull up the map of Final Fantasy 1, you'll, uh, if you connect the dots, like if you connect the Mirage Tower to the Earth Cave, draw a line from uh, where the Mirage Tower is located to where the Earth Cave is located, then draw a line from where the Sea Shrine is located to the volcano, you'll notice that the Temple of Fiends is right in those intersecting lines, so it's right in the center of those four areas. Which is really cool, I like how they designed it like that. As soon as these man-cats quit using Fire 2 on us, there we go, we'll run. Another thing that I like about this floor is like the little computers that tell you that Tiamat is the Fiend of Wind. Alright, we get a katana right here. There we go. Like I said, the katana is the third most powerful weapon in the entire game. But to me, it's visually unimpressive. They should have made it look like a sword, in my opinion. Instead, it looks like a little pathetic dagger. Still hits pretty good, though. As soon as we get away from these man-cats, we'll uh, continue to make progress. Alright, on this floor it can be a really big maze. Just go left twice and then down twice. So go left by one column, then left another column, and then down twice. Or you can go right twice, down twice, or left twice, up twice, right twice, up twice. Whatever you want to do, just go 
one direction twice, the other direction twice. So go left twice, down twice. That's what I always do anyway. I remember this floor used to confuse me whenever I was a kid because I didn't realize that it looped around so much like that. Alright. Next floor will be the final one of the Sky Castle. Alright, here we go. We got a really long bridge leading to Tiamat. Let's go ahead and heal up really quick. This is the floor where you can encounter war mechs, so let's really hope that uh, that doesn't happen. We should be okay, though. At least I really hope, uh, Ty or not time that, but war mech doesn't appear. Just about done healing. Finish healing up Onyx, and we'll continue our walk along the bridge here. Besides war mech, the rest of the enemies on this bridge don't put up too much of a threat, except for maybe some sorcerers. There we go, good. Just keep on making our way across this bridge. More sorcerers, of course. Hopefully we get out of there. There we go. Nice. Alright. Just about to tie a mat. Nauchos. Something like that. Weird name. Strange creature, even. Looks like a spaghetti monster. Alright, heal up whatever HP we lost really quick, and then we will do battle with Tiamat. Okay, you can actually kill this fiend by using the spell Bane. You can kill him in one hit if you're lucky. Okay, let's go ahead and fast up the ninja, then we'll just throw a bunch of nukes at Tiamat. Tiamat has 1000 HP, which might seem like a lot, but really if you're powerful enough, that's not even very much. Tiamat will usually use, a uh, attack spells, enemy attack spells, that is. Thunder, poison, different stuff like that. That was a pretty good hit from the ninja. Like I said, the katana is a pretty good weapon. It's just visually unimpressive. Time match shouldn't uh, survive too many more rounds. We've already taken out well over 600 of her HP. Yeah, if I remember right, time match is actually a girl. As much as you might think that it's a guy, it's actually a girl, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure Lich and Kraken are supposed to be boys, and then Carrie and Tiamat are supposed to be girls. I find myself even calling Tiamat a guy from time to time, just because it seems more manly than feminine to me. Whatever, though. The Fiend of Wind is now down now. Yeah, I didn't expect the Fiend of Wind to put up too much of a fight, considering that we have plenty of powerful stuff. Okay, our next destination will be the Temple of Fiends. We can now go back in time to fight the soul source of evil himself, Chaos. Before we do that, though, I'm probably going to level up just a little bit. Probably like to level 35 or so. And then we'll take on the Temple of Fiends in the past. You can get another Pro Cape in the past if you have more mages, but uh, I'm not going to worry about it. We should be just fine. Alright, go ahead and park the airship, and then I'm going to go ahead and go level up. Alright, I'm now done leveling up. We are now level 35. Here's Ninja Hope stats. Red Wizard Hat stats. And Black Wizard Onyx stats. All of our armor is still the same and everything. Weapons. Magic is all still the same. I went ahead and bought 99 of all items just because. I had more than enough uh, gold to do so, so why not? I mentioned earlier the Sky Warriors, how they said they lost five and they knew that they lived but as bad. Well, the five lost Sky Warriors were the ones in front of the Black Orb back there in the Temple of Fiends. Once you've lit up all four orbs, if you talk to them, they'll actually speak back to you. I remember whenever I finally found that out, it was strictly by accident. One of them got in my way, and I pressed the A button, and I talked to him, and he spoke back to me. I'm like, whoa, that is weird. Then I went around uh, the whole world searching, talking to other bats, and all the other ones would just say Kiki to me. I gave up after, like, three other bats said Kiki, but still, I thought that was kind of cool that uh, the five in the Temple of Fiends had some sort of meaning to them. Whatever the case, though, we are now uh, 2,000 years in the past in the Temple of Fiends before it became all torn up and everything. We got a little mini-boss battle coming up right over here against the, uh, the Phantom. 
Here's one of the most annoying enemies in this entire dungeon, the Gas Dragons. You can't run from them, and uh, they like to use the Poison spell. If you're decently leveled, then they're not too hard, but they're still really annoying just because you can't run from them at all. Whatever the case, though, just take them out as soon as you can. Use your most powerful stuff to wipe them out. They shouldn't uh, last but another turn, then they'll be down and out. Gas Dragons don't appear on a whole lot of floors in this temple so you won't have to worry too much about them, but they're still really annoying. This one should go out uh, once we get our next attack off. There is one thing that I uh, don't care for in Final Fantasy 1. It's if uh, you have two warriors target an enemy, and then the for if the first warrior kills the enemy that you had the two attack, then the second warrior will just swing his weapon at the air instead of just auto-targeting a new enemy or something. It can be kind of annoying at times, but most of the time I already know whenever an enemy is going to die, so I go ahead and have a, a, a different warrior attack a different enemy. So it's usually not that annoying, but it's still kind of annoying every now and then, I suppose. I know they fixed it in future versions, but still. Here we are at the mini-boss, already now down and out. Kind of funny that you only earn one gold and one experience point from him. You finally get to put that loot that you've been carrying around forever to good use. You gotta use it to destroy the stone plate. Before we go any deeper, though, we're gonna go ahead and heal up. We got a couple more floors to go through. After we've uh, went through our next two or three floors, two floors, I think, we'll start going through elemental floors, and on the elemental floors, we'll be fighting each of the elemental fiends again. The elemental fiends will have uh, stronger attacks as well as more HP. Still, though... They're not too terribly powerful. Also, in this dungeon, we'll be getting the most powerful weapon in the entire game, the Mass Moon, or Mass Moon, or something like that. Any warrior can equip it. It's a really powerful sword. I'll probably be giving that sword to uh, the Red Wizard, since uh, the Thief already has the third most powerful weapon in the game, and only he can use that. The Ninja, I mean, not the Thief. Same difference, though, I suppose. Go ahead and get rid of these annoying little frost giants here, and then we can keep on moving. This one should go down fairly quickly. There he goes. Alright, let's keep on moving. Yeah, there will be a lot of enemy encounters that you can't actually run from or anything. So just take them out the best that you can and keep on moving. Make sure you have plenty of uh, potions and magic before coming to this area, because you'll need to heal up quite a bit. Just gotta go left in this area. I always found it kinda weird that you can't run from worms. Worms of all things, come on. I guess it's not a big deal, but still, it just seems kinda funny to picture three legendary warriors and they can't run from two worms of all things. Whatever, though. Kinda nasty looking worms. Next one should go down fairly easy. Then we can keep on making our way through the temple. There we go. Just gotta keep heading uh, left a little bit more here on this floor. Just gotta go straight over this way. You can also encounter stuff like zombie dragons and things like that. I like the music that you hear in the Temple of Fiends in the past. Pretty good song in my opinion. Got some frost dragons, we'll just run from them. They're not worth our time. Alright, there we go. Alright, next up we will be doing the elemental floors here in the Temple of Fiends Revisited. Before we do that, let's go ahead and heal up. Don't have too much more healing to do, there we go. Alright, like I said, next up we'll be doing the elemental floors in the Temple of Fiends Revisited, and we'll be destroying chaos. And well, that is it for this part, and thank you for watching.